I'm Steve for This Week with Cars, and this week I have another Pontiac that's been sitting for a long time. This Star Chief has been sitting for a minimum of 10 years since it has been started. People have a tendency to underestimate how long something has been sitting around. This car is a 1957 Pontiac Star Chief, which is the top trim level for the Pontiac Chieftain. Let's take a look at it and see if we can get it drivable again. This car has a 347 cubic inch engine. Looks like the car is complete. I think it was running and parked and then nobody messed with it after that. It probably just didn't start one year and they just left it sitting. Looks like from all the droppings that the battery was a favorite place for the mice to be sitting. The date on this battery is from January 2010. Let's see if this battery has any voltage. It's been left connected this whole time. Okay, three and a half volts. I'm going to put a battery charger on it, charge it up, and then we'll go from there. The battery's charged up the best I could get it. Let's see if anything works. Looks like the dome lights turn on. Let's take a quick look inside here. You can see Pontiac across the middle of the steering wheel here. The Pontiac Chief. The finish on the dashboard surround, that is just aluminum. It is not chromed. There's a Wonder Bar radio, as well as a clock. And over here in front of the passenger side, it says Star Chief. Let's turn the key and see if anything happens. I think I saw the fuel gauge move slightly. Maybe not. Let's try to start it. We saw the amp meter and the temp gauge move there. There wasn't much chance of that old battery working, but it was worth a try. Now with the new battery, see what happens. Cranks over. Now that we know the engine turns over, let's take a look under the hood. The first step was seeing if the engine would turn over. Now we need to check if there's any spark. So I'm gonna put my inline spark tester in here and this will flash red if there's a spark going through here. There's a very good chance that we have no spark because the points are too corroded. Surprisingly, it looked like it had a good spark. We saw a lot of red flashing here. So our problem is not the ignition. If we can solve our fuel problem, we should be in business. This is a fuel line that comes up from the fuel pump, then it goes into a fuel filter, and then over to the carburetor. To see if we're getting fuel, I'm going to undo this hose right here. Feels bone dry there, so I don't think the fuel pump was running at all. I'm going to connect my fuel drip tank up to the fuel filter instead. I'm going to turn the fuel on. Let's wait a minute. Make sure that it's not going to leak everywhere. But I can hear it going into the carburetor right now. Let's give this another go.
it's running you can see it's blowing all kinds of mouse nests out of the exhaust right now it smells absolutely terrible inside the car if I rev it up you can see the charging system is working and over here we have almost 60 pounds of oil pressure so that looks good up here in the engine bay we have no signs of fuel coming from the fuel pump so if we want this car to drive we're going to have to address that problem let's take a look under the car now we can see the bottom of the spare tire well and here is the fuel tank fuel comes out of the tank on that line it then curves around to the opposite side of the frame. Here it is coming down the top of the frame and then ending up on the outside of the frame. We can follow that all the way up to the front of the car. And then it crosses over the top of the frame and then into the fuel pump. It looks like accessing the fuel pump will mostly be done from above. We can get a glimpse of it here, but otherwise there's a lot of things in the way. I'm going to undo the fuel line back here, right where it goes into the fuel tank. That way I can blow air from here up to the front to check to see if it's the line that's clogged or the fuel tank. I'm gonna connect my pump up to the tank, see if we can suck some fuel out of it. There's some starting to come. Not a lot though. Let's try to connect it up the other way. See if we get fuel to come back this direction. Yeah, fuel's coming back from the pump. So our problem must be here in the tank. I still have the gas cap off. Don't try this put the gas cap on your tank so you might explode it but I'm going to take my air gun and I'm going to try to blow air into the tank to see if I can get this unclogged nope this line or something in the tank must be pretty clogged up because I cannot blow any air through it it does go in the tank through the sending unit, so I'll see if I can pop the sending unit out without taking the tank off. This is the front of the tank, and right there is the sending unit. It has a wire connected for the fuel level, and then the pipe that goes in that feeds the fuel up to the engine. It looks like it's held on by five bolts. Here's the sender that came out of it. The float still does move. Looks like the wire that went to it though is completely corroded so the fuel gauge will not be working. I'm gonna take my blow gun, try to blow through it again. Verify that this is clogged up. I can hear some air coming through, but hardly any. So this tube is definitely clogged up. Since the fuel sender looked that bad, I'm going to take the drain plug out of the bottom of the fuel tank and drain the fuel tank as well.
Looks like this must have had a full tank of fuel in it. Here's the new fuel sender. This one actually has a filter on the pickup. And you can see the wire there that connects down here from the float up to the base plate where you can connect it up to the fuel gauge. This is going to be kind of difficult to get back in because this is clocked and so the gasket is clocked as well. It's only going to be installed one way. They did not make the holes the right size in the gasket. So I'm having trouble getting the bolts to go through it. I think I'm going to push all the bolts through the gasket first and then try to bolt it on. Now I can put new fuel in and start the whole process over again. Now I'm going to crank the engine and we'll see if any fuel comes out of here. Now we know the fuel pump works and the fuel can get to it. I just need to hook this back up and the engine should be running. Now that the car can run, the next thing it needs to do is stop. And if I push the brakes, there's nothing there. Well, that's it for today with the old Pontiac. Next time we'll try to get the brakes to work and just keep working from there to get this into a running and driving car again. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.